Team luck in you. Team luck in you. Sukinanuk ha. Sukinanuk hmm. Sukinanuk ha. Sukinanuk hmm. Team luck in you means to remember the old ways, how they were. Sukinanuk means to bring them back to life, to share them once again. Pre-European contact was a very organized, valued culture and society. Roads that are currently put through uh, our area were old Native American trails. Some tribes along the coast, like Shumash, were able to make shell bead money and use that as trade. Our land was vast, population of plus 10,000 people. We were all part of a major society. We were scientists, we were mathematicians, we were cooks, we were adventurers. We were forest managers, conservationists, people who know how to plot the ocean, deal with currents, harvest. That knowledge was there amongst these people. Their ability to, to create a society that operated with trade and economy was in existence pre-European contact. As occupation came across the indigenous lands, uh, it became a different type of mindset with mild temperate weather, fresh water resources, an abundance of food and the climate to support it. It was coveted by a society that was not ours and values that were not ours. It was to own Native Americans. It was to own our land. So without an understanding of the culture, we came in peace and curiosity. We started the process of colonization. The church leaders, priests, came to villages to take the young people to uh, the mission, to indoctrinate them, to colonize them, to have them become uh, wards of the church, learning a whole new religion, learning a whole new aspect of a whole new culture, how you're supposed to live, look, and act. I guess some of the real impacts of the mission system was it totally broke down the system that existed and destroyed the networks of native communities up and down the state. Where people that have contributed to the land's continuation were part of that cycle. And we want to be sure that we can do whatever we can to continue that and honor that. And we expect unequivocally to be addressed as a nation. That's what sovereignty is about. We make our own decisions. We govern ourselves autonomously from the federal government. You know, we were stripped of a lot of things when the mission was here, but really also after the mission period was over, we had to assimilate into a culture that was mainly, there was a lot of Spanish speakers here in California. They were told to say that they were Mexican and not natives. They definitely stripped a lot of our tribal people of their identity, and that includes language. So there are so many different things that come into play on why this language was stolen, was lost. Maria Salares is the reason we have this language. She was born, she believed, to save the language, to save the stories, to save the culture. She started working with John Peabody Harrington in 1913, and they worked closely together for almost four years. He took in every single word that she said. So J.P. Harrington left us with about 100,000 pages of written notes. That's not all Somala, it does go all the way through the Chumash Nation. So Dr. Richard Applegate created a dictionary and he worked with us for a good five, six years to bring back the language, to bringing back what Maria and J.P. Harrington worked on years ago. So much has been discovered since we've been bringing back the language and been able to really study the Harrington notes. We speak Somala Chumash, and we know it's called Somala because what Maria said, we are Somala people, our language is Somala. She actually has this beautiful phrase, Somala. Our Somala language is like the flower of this earth. Learning language isn't just about learning words or a word list, it's actually in each and every one of us, it grows in us. It tells stories, it tells culture, it sings songs. It has taught us so much about where to gather, where our villages were, who was in those villages. 
and about our existence. Our language is the core of who we are. And, you know, my ancestors clearly didn't want it to happen this way, but it did. Culture and language did not become number one anymore. They had to survive and they had to assimilate. And that's what they did. They did that to protect us. So now it's our job, now that we are in this stable place, now that we have support, it is our job to bring back this language. It is our job to bring back the culture. It is our job to help bring this back to our people. We have to remember the past, but not try to live the past. But it's important to know, you know, the history. You know, you think about your ancestors and, and you think of them in terms of just being people. You don't realize how talented these people are, are, you know, whether it's making a basket, learning how to make a bow. It's just knowing about what, what you're working with and just keep passing these traditions on. In today's world, you just go out and buy, where in that world, they had to make their uh, utensils. They had to make uh, other things. They're working with stone shells, sumac, deer grass, junk that's textless. It wasn't just making a basket. There was uh, reasons for it. If you wanted to carry a, a liquid or water mostly, you used a tar pitch. They needed something to gather fruit or they needed something to cook in. Just selling, trade, it was just all part of their existence. And it tells about the tribe, what was available to them. There is a lot to make it because you just don't go out and gather it. You do have to dry it. You do have to split it. You do have to uh, dye it if that's what you want. That's why I think it's an honor to be able to carry on these traditions. You're not just making a basket. It opens your mind up. You're thinking about why these baskets were made, who made these baskets, and just knowing how they existed. Having an understanding of what the first people of this land actually lived off of really helps our tribal people change how they connect. The more we get in touch and the more we understand, the more we know how the plants are growing and uh, we're utilizing them for real things like medicine. Some of the main staple foods for our Chumash people, our ancestors, is definitely acorn, chia seeds, pine nuts, toyon berries, and isle. Each season had its particular foods that we would, we would be gathering. Today, with the change of the climate, it's really affected when and how we go do it. The Chumash people, you know, they lived off the landscape and, you know, fire is part of nature. Fire was utilized to clean up the landscape, to promote that new growth, to allow game to move through. When you have an open area, it's easier for hunters to see them to hunt. They just function at such a high level of connecting to the land, it's just, it's unbelievable. The good thing is that all those teachings are there and we can go back and re-educate and connect ourselves. Reintroducing it back into our food, into our taste buds, because this is part of who we are. You know, entertainment, uh, it's a big part of our culture. Just being happy and being part of the community, making sure that the community is a whole. So we used to bring all these tribes together at these celebrations in California. They're called big times. Sometimes people call them powwows. We would have those a long time ago. If you look at the bigger picture, it was to uh, build these relationships between people and between tribes. Some of the traditional games that were played by the Chumash were hoop and pull, shinny stick, walnut dice, and hand games. With the hand games, you have to learn the rules of the game, but you also have to learn these songs. Hand games is a traditional uh, gambling game. There are two separate teams. Each team gets five sticks on each side and then one dummy stick in the middle. And the goal is to guess the team's matching bones. It's not just playing the game presently too, it, it has a lot to go with it. Like all the gathering of all the materials, where you get those materials, who you gather the materials with. It's so important that we continue to keep these games going so we can keep our connections 
with the ancestors and keep our connections with the past because it's so important. And we as a people stick together as a community because we're the last of the Somali Chumash. And we need to keep our culture with us.